Hello everyone. Anyone else remember this? I was a huge dinosaur fanatic growing up, still am, so this was one of my favorite videos as a kid. You should easily be able to find it elsewhere on YouTube. I'd highly recommend it to anyone as a starting point for learning about dinosaurs, especially kids. But there is one section of the video that I want to bring up especially. Scattered throughout are what it calls dinosaur dozens, which are exactly what they sound like, a list of 12 species from each of the five dinosaur families. I think that's a really cool idea, so what I've decided to do here is to create my own version of those dinosaur dozens and upload them over the next five days. Now, before we start, I think I'd better explain something. These dozens are going to differ a bit from the ones on this video. After all, this program was made in 1982. It's almost 35 years old, so some of the information may be hideously outdated today. For example, names like Anatosaurus and Dromesia mimus are no longer recognized by science, so I changed them to Edmontosaurus and Struthia mimus, respectively. And yes, I know Dromesia mimus has been reclassified as Ornithomimus, not Struthia mimus, but hey, it's my list. I've also changed out names wherever I thought a dinosaur mentioned on the video wasn't really famous enough to be included. For example, on the video, Acanthophilus and Palaeoscincus are included in the dozen for the armored dinosaurs. I somehow felt a couple of more familiar names were called for, so I changed them to Edmontonia and Sauropelta. There are also a couple of unique examples I just have to mention. On the video, Pachycephalosaurus is included in the dozen for the ornithopods, the bird-footed plant-eaters. I removed it because it's technically not an ornithopod and replaced it with Tenontosaurus. And the original dozen for the sauropodomorphs, the long-necked plant-eaters, cheats somewhat by starting with baby Camarasaurus. I decided to change it to a small prosauropod, Ankysaurus, and move the adult Camarasaurus further down the line sacrificing the Riohosaurus that was in there originally. But anyway, like I said, I'm sure you can find Dinosaurs Fun Fact and Fantasy on YouTube somewhere, so perhaps you'd like to check out the original dozens just to see how they differ. Good luck getting the theme song out of your head, though. My narration, by the way, is all taken from a document I compiled during my free time on a computer course I took a couple of years ago. I try to make each one no longer than three lines. And the last thing I should mention is that the dinosaurs in these dozens will roughly be in order of increasing size, starting with the smallest and ending with the biggest in each family, with a couple of exceptions, one of which in particular I'll point out when we come to it. Anyway, enough rambling. Let's get started with... The Sauropodomorphs, the long neck plant eaters. Ankysaurus was one of the first dinosaurs to be discovered back in 1818 in Connecticut although it wasn't formally described until 1885. It was a small, long-necked herbivore that could walk on either two legs or four. It lived in the eastern USA in the early Jurassic period, about 190 to 174 million years ago. Thecodontosaurus was one of the earliest dinosaurs, as well as one of the first to be discovered. It was a small plant eater that walked on two legs, with a neck that was unusually short for a sauropodomorph, and a tail that took up more than half of its total length. It lived in southern England in the late Triassic, 203 to 199 million years ago, which technically means it also carried over into the Jurassic period, but we won't split hairs over a couple of million years. Massospondylus was a medium-sized prosauropod. Thanks to many fossil finds of individuals of all different ages, scientists have a clear picture of how Massospondylus lived and grew. These finds also show that prosauropods walked on two legs instead of four like their later giant cousins. It lived in South Africa in the early Jurassic, 200 to 183 million years ago. Volcanodon was one of the earliest sauropod dinosaurs, and represents a link between the earlier prosauropods and the later giants like Brachiosaurus. A skull has never been found, so we can only guess what it looked like. It lived in southern Africa in the early Jurassic, 183 to 175 million years ago. Platyosaurus is probably the most famous of the prosauropods. It was one of the first large dinosaur herbivores, 
and its grasping hands and curved claws would have allowed it to pull down branches and eat leaves that none of its contemporary animals could reach. It lived in northern Europe in the late Triassic, 214 to 204 million years ago. And because we're getting bigger now, let me throw something else in here to give you an idea of its scale. Now, I'm going to bring the car right up alongside it so you'd have some idea of what you'd see if one were to walk by while you were sitting in it. Mm. And that's only an average sized dinosaur. There's still so much bigger left to come. Cetiosaurus was a very primitive sauropod. Its backbones were solid, unlike the hollowed out vertebrae of more advanced sauropods like Brachiosaurus. It was named Whale Lizard because its discoverer, Sir Richard Owen, thought it was a marine creature. It lived in Europe and Africa in the mid-Jurassic, 167 million years ago. A Passosaurus was shorter but even heavier than its close relative, Diplodocus. Scientists used to think it dragged its tail along the ground when it walked, but fossilized trackways show its footprints but no evidence of tail marks, proving that even these huge beasts held their tails aloft. It lived in the USA in the late Jurassic, 152 to 151 million years ago. And to once again give you an idea of its size, this is the size of a modern African elephant. Camarasaurus is the most common of the giant sauropods to be discovered in North America. It had an unusually box-shaped head with huge nostrils that led some people to think it had a trunk like an elephant. It lived in the USA in the late Jurassic, 155 to 145 million years ago. And the reason why you see two, by the way, is because I felt the need to make a distinction between the most famous species, which is about 18 meters long, and the largest species, which is about 23 meters long. Brachiosaurus is one of the largest and tallest dinosaurs ever discovered. It weighed as much as eight modern elephants. With a vertical neck and longer front legs than hind legs, it stood 43 feet, 13 meters tall, so it could easily eat the highest leaves from the tallest trees. It too lived in the USA in the late Jurassic, 154 to 153 million years ago. Diplodocus was one of the longest dinosaurs of all time, but surprisingly lightweight compared to some of its smaller relatives. It was a slender, lightly built sauropod with pencil-like teeth and a long, whip-like tail. It had a row of spines running the length of its back. It too lived in the USA in the late Jurassic, 154 to 152 million years ago. And to once again give you an idea of its true size, and once again I'm going to bring it up alongside so you'd have some idea of what you'd see through the windows. That thought always gives me chills. Mamenchisaurus is known for its remarkably long neck, which took up half of the dinosaur's total length. The most famous species is about 72 feet, 22 meters long, but an even larger species may be one of the largest dinosaurs to ever live, at up to 115 feet, 35 meters long. It lived in China in the late Jurassic, 160 to 145 million years ago. And once again, there are two pictured here to illustrate the size difference between the most famous species and the largest one. I should really have ended the dozen with this one, but because there's such a huge size differential between the two species, I decided to split the difference, as it were. Now we come to the twelfth and final one here. Supersaurus is one of the biggest dinosaurs ever unearthed. It was related to Diplodocus and Apatosaurus, but had proportionately longer bones. Many gigantic sauropods roamed in herds across the US during the late Jurassic period, but Supersaurus stood head and shoulders above them all. It lived, as I just mentioned, in the USA in the late Jurassic, 153 million years ago.